Welcome back, everyone. President Obama's immigration policies will head to the Supreme Court and the justices will have the final say. The high court, we learned this week, will now consider undoing lower court rulings that blocked the plan from taking effect. The issue is whether the president was acting within his powers when he issued an executive order. It allows nearly 5 million immigrants who are in the country illegally to get work permits and some federal benefits. Texas is leading 26 states in challenging the immigration plan. That's our topic this half hour, and we want to hear from you on our Fox 26 Facebook page. We've posted our topics for you there, so we invite you to weigh in. You can also do so on Twitter. Be sure to use the hashtag fox 26 for life Joining us live in the newsroom is our panel, led by our senior legal analyst, Chris Tritico, our news analyst, Mustafa Tamiz, and public policy analyst, Jackie Bally. Good to see you all. Good, Good morning. morning. So they're going to hear these arguments in April. They'll decide in June. This is definitely going to add fuel to the illegal immigration debate uh, for the president. Race. Well, it's certainly going to uh, going to play a part in the primaries uh, as we move forward and, and the briefing comes on comes along. The, let me let me just dispel a couple of rumors. The fact that the U.S. Supreme Court says we will review something does not mean that they agree with one side or the other. It just means that they want to look at it. And, and coming up in a little bit after we come back to you, we're going to talk about the Supreme Court asking about the take care clause, which I think is one of the most interesting developments we've had in U.S. Supreme Court litigation in a very long time. But this, this is going to, uh, Mustafa, this is going to add fuel to the fire of whether or not the president, and the issue here is not about immigration. The issue is, the greater issue is, does the president of the United States have the authority to issue orders that typically we would expect Congress to have passed laws on? Yeah, and, and there's a lot of questions about uh, presidential authority, especially while Barack Obama's ruled, and it's been a real political conversation. But... I think what he's responding to is the lack of action by the United States Congress. There's been long talk about doing some kind of comprehensive immigration reform, and the Congress is just not capable of doing it. Refuses. And so, he, so he's basically trying to move the country forward any way that he can, and he's doing it through executive orders. I remember John Boehner two, at least two years ago, maybe longer than that, saying, uh, we need to do something about immigration, but we will not tackle it this year. And that's when the president said, you know what, I'm done with this. I'm passing, I'm issuing an executive order. At some point, does Congress have a duty to act? Well, the difference, what we're seeing in immigration is uh, Congress believes that first we have to take the borders and look at, at control there before we even look at any other measures and the president disagrees. So that's been the basis of the contention between the two branches. Uh, the question with this particular law and what's going on with the Supreme Court and what they're looking at is, yes, the, the president has the authority to tell uh, branches and agencies to enforce certain laws, but uh, has he actually written the law himself? And that's the interpretation of some. Some court, the yeah, lower courts have said that that's what happened, and so now the Supreme Court's going to look at it and, and, we'll, and, see, and, we'll and see where see it goes. If that's exactly what happened. And, and, and there, is there some merit to the argument that the president should not have the authority to go around Congress and issue orders that really are new law? It's, I think it's an interpretation of the law, and he's basically he's basically instructing the agencies on on enforcement action. So, you know, f from my perspective, I think he has he has the authority to do so. People may argue about it, but at the end of the day, he's actually doing something while the United States Congress has been completely ineffective. All right, let me go to Sally. She's monitoring our social media. Okay, let's check in with Ben first on Twitter. We always appreciate Ben waking up early with us. He says the executive order should be struck down. No time for public comments. And then this person says even if the Supreme Court upholds the president's executive order on immigration, a Republican president can and probably will reverse it. So vote. Oh. And that's not what that tweet was. It was something else there, but that's what he said. <laughs> well, look, it, it's true that any president could come in and undo executive orders mm -hmm. of the previous administration. And, Ben, I, I regret to inform you, we've had public comment about this issue for about eight years now, maybe 25 years now. So I think there was some public comment. I want to talk about what the Supreme Court did, which was a surprise to all of us who, who practice law and look at this stuff. They issued an order on when they said, we're going to take this up. But we also want you to brief the clause in the Constitution, Article 2, Section 3, says, quote, he shall take care that the laws be faithfully executed. And the Supreme Court said, brief for us what is the president's responsibility with respect to that clause. No, one, no court has ever construed it before. Well, part of the problem has been that in, through his executive orders, it has been interpreted that the president is saying, don't 
follow the law. Do not deport certain people. The largest number that we've had, of uh, the largest number of illegal immigrants we've had deported was in 2013. That was like a quarter of a million people. And so the president, by saying, if, you're, if illegals came here and they have now have children, don't deport them, uh, I, I differ with my colleague here when he says the president's doing something. Actually, actually, he's telling them, don't do your job. Don't do something. Well, I don't think we can assume that's what the Supreme Court meant, but it, it's, it's a big day when the Supreme Court on its own motion says, let's take a look at this section of the U.S. Constitution that no one has ever challenged before and no one challenged today. Well, he, they're, they're narrowing what the conversation should be about because they know that this is just a politically charged um, you know, issue that comes in front of the court. So they're narrowing it on presidential authority and presidential interpretation and presidential now, powers. We're out of time, but I want to get this out. I want to just sort of quick answer from both of you. If the Supreme Court doesn't do anything with respect to the take care clause, doesn't this open up litigation with this president and any other president when people say you're not faithfully uh, making sure, taking care of this law and suing over that? Well, it, again, it goes back to the presidential powers, and so I think that's that's the real quick. Well, isn't that why people like you have jobs? <laughs> <laughs> I get people out of jail. <laughs> <laughs>